Hey my friends, today I will show you the apartment that we are currently staying in. Uh, share three frugal tips that we are sticking to and also rant a bit about a financial nightmare that I'm in now as a Russian. Currently, we are in the city of Škodr or Škodra in Albania. We came here immediately after we finished our like tiny vacation in Montenegro. We spent a few beautiful and restful days there. The bus trip from Montenegro to Albania took only one hour and a half and we had absolutely no problems when crossing the border. Immediately after we left the bus, we felt like we are at home. This city is very beautiful, uh, the architecture is human-sized, and thus you don't get that feeling of being suppressed. I really like the bright colors, the historical feelings, the bikes and the varied ages of the cyclists. There are also plenty of small cafes and thrift shops where you can duck into when it gets too hot. We decided to stay here for quite a long term, well, now for a month, but probably we will extend this time, because neither Brian nor I need a visa for three months of stay, so it makes it very convenient for us in the given circumstances. And we also need this time to kind of settle in our new life situation and to come back to our senses after all these years of being apart. Brian found this apartment on Airbnb and uh, now the, it's actually possible to rent for a month or even more. And when you pay for a whole month, Airbnb gives you a quite substantial discount. So for this apartment, we paid around $500 for a month of staying here. And of course, it's um, cheaper probably, yeah, probably for sure when you rent from um, locals directly. But for now, the Airbnb option is the safest for, for us. If you're interested, let me give you a short apartment tour. This is our entryway. Uh, here we have a washing machine, which is such a huge thing for us. So we wash our clothes a lot. And here we have a full-size refrigerator, a freezer and everything. So it has just a perfect size for two people. This is everything that we have at the moment. And let's go to the living room which is combined with the kitchen. I was so excited to finally get my own work desk, uh, which is here. And Brian was very generous to let me use it for my work because for years I've been using kitchen tables for work. And Brian's workplace is here at the kitchen countertop. So but I hope it's comfortable for him. Uh, let me show you the views, because the views are really amazing from this apartment. So, it's here. Oh. You can see the nunnery. This is, this is it. And we, in the evenings we see nuns having a walk and a chat, and there are Albanian Alps and it's very picturesque houses yeah it's really enjoyable let's close right now we are not using the AC because of the sound but here it is and it's a real life savior for us during the days because temperatures get really high like upper 30 celsius and upper 90s fahrenheit uh, here we have foldable dining table where we have our meals at 
And here we have the sofa, which is very big, very comfortable, and we enjoy sitting here in the evenings and having movie nights. And this is the kitchen area. It's very, very well equipped. We have all kinds of appliances that we could ever need. We have a toaster, a kettle, there is even a kitchen blender there, and plates, pots, just everything. Another nice view. Mm -hmm. And our tiny pantry. Here it is, we are reusing all these jars and we cook a lot here in Albania because there are no plenty of vegan and vegetarian options in the restaurants. So we usually go out and eat out only maybe once a week and all the rest of the time we cook. Ashkodra is a smaller city compared to the capital of the country, Tirana. It relies heavily on a traditional Albanian cuisine that is based on meat and fish and all those animal products. But we've heard and we will have a chance to check it out in person that Tirana, the capital, is more vegan friendly. So we are excited to, to test it. This is what we've got for six dollars, all of it. So it's cherries, carrots, garlic, tomatoes, again, those giant ones. Um, oh my god. I Broccoli. <laughs> Broccoli. Peppers. Everything for six dollars. And the lady was very, very sweet. She refused to take the change because we decided just to leave them some change. And she gave us this for free, two bananas, red pepper, and two apricots. And she also, before, gave us cherries to taste. Our frugal rule number one is not to buy anything in advance. For example, food. We try to buy as much food as we are going to eat today and probably tomorrow as a leftover snack. At the beginning of our journey, uh, we couldn't figure out how much of everything we'd need and we ended up wasting a lot. So now we are trying to be as practical and minimalist as possible. And this rule uh, not only helps us uh, avoid wasting food, but also be more mindful of our meals. Now let's move to the bedroom. It is very minimalist and very cozy and we have absolutely everything that we need. Even some artwork on the walls. And there is a balcony here with a drying rack where we dry our laundry and it literally takes a couple of hours. Yeah, the same beautiful view that you can see. Getting back. This is a wardrobe and we also have a chest of drawers for all our clothes, which are not numerous, as you can see, <laughs> and mostly these are all mine. And as for Brian, he actually now has an extreme minimalist summer wardrobe. He has only three tees, one button-up, one pair of shorts, and one pair of sneakers. But it actually works well for him, so... And here we are in the bathroom. It's very spacious and practical. And actually there are short water outages in Albania. They are not as extreme as the ones that we had when we lived in uh, Tbilisi, Georgia. But for that case, we have some emergency water, which is here. All our utility bills and Wi-Fi are included in the rent. 
we have bed linen, towels, good quality furniture and even knickknacks, so it's a great value for this price. If we rented outside Airbnb, we'd have to buy our own things, which would not only be extra spending, but also an extra load to our luggage further on. Also, the apartment is situated in the city center and very close to all sorts of supermarkets and street markets, so we don't have to rent a car or use public transport. Anyway, we haven't seen many buses here whatsoever. People are just using their cars and all sorts of bikes and mopeds. Rule number two, gratefully accept everything that is offered. And it's not like a frugal tip, but more like a tip for a fulfilled living. Brian and I both experienced low income in our lives and in the past we were very stubborn, refusing to accept people's help due to many reasons depending on the age, but with, um, with everything that we've been through, our life together now has become possible thanks to the help and support from our family, friends and the community here, and I'm not exaggerating. We often tend to forget about the genuine human kindness. And many times we, and I don't mean only Brian and me, but humans in general, we tend to grow suspicious, skeptical, and we close our hearts because we are afraid to be disappointed. We are afraid to be neglected, to be in debt. But at some moment, Brian and I decided to open up to the world and to accept what it has to offer, what people in it have to offer, both known and unknown, and we are forever grateful for our experiences. Of course, there were not only positive moments, but other ones, but it doesn't matter after all. And of course, it's normal to want to stay inside, not to trust anything or anyone outside your own mind and body. But there is another way, and I'm still being very optimistic about it. And Brian and I are trying to stay open and also to pay back to the world however we can in the given situation because it's just a fair thing to do even if it takes time. We were so happy to have this wonderful accommodation for some time of stress-free living but of course nothing in this world is possible now stress-free and we encountered some pretty unexpected um, financial struggle related to my bank account savings savings on my bank account so i um basically i cannot do anything with my uh, savings in dollars that i still had on my russian bank account because of all the strict requirements and commissions that the bank introduced without any prior announcement. So my dollars that I have maybe had because basically they, they turned into nothing. I cannot send the money to Brian because it is prohibited now because I don't have more than 20k dollars and it's impossible for an average russian to have <laughs> to have that sum of money so um, i didn't earn much in siberia but all those years that we've been apart with brian i did my best to save everything that i could and to convert that money to dollars for our future so now everything that I had saved on the bank account, but luckily I had some cash too, so my crappy Russian bank is not allowing me to perform any SWIFT-based operations. 
uh, with the dollars that I have. I cannot even send that money to my brother so that he, he can withdraw it because now it's prohibited by the Central Bank of Russia. For us, the only way to salvage at least some of the dollars is to convert them into rubles within the bank according to a very imaginary and absolutely not realistic exchange rate and thus uh, i'm losing more than a half of my savings yeah it's a very frustrating situation and we are trying yeah, to do at least anything to use crypto and some very messy schemes and this is what every Russian now has to do when being abroad because of the sanctions and because of all the crappy things that Russian banks do as well just making use of the of the situation I'm also currently not able to get any money from my YouTube channel because um, as I'm registered as a Russian with YouTube and its partner program, uh, I cannot attach any bank details that are from a foreign bank, so I have to use Russian bank. And with the new policy of my bank, the bank charges $200 for each transaction. So, for example, in May on this channel, I made only $220. So, if I transferred, if I gave my permission, right, to Google to transfer that amount to my Russian bank, my bank would take a commission for this transaction and the amount of that commission would be $200 which means that I would get only $20 for hours and hours of work um, so I'm also trying to figure out what can be done about it because I honestly think it's it's a robbery um, there there are no other words to describe it sorry for this long and messy explanation but it's really been one of the main stresses these days of course i realize that so many awful things are happening in the moment in the world and we are in a more privileged position than so many people and we are together but i'm still giving myself the right to be upset by from being pressured by from two sides two opposing political forces and i'm in the middle like a piece of tofu between two squeezing words this is how it feels and from here comes our frugal slash survival rule number three never wait for the financial situation to get better always take immediate action if there is any threatening sign and it's not alarmism i guess the only sphere of my life where pessimism helped me a ton is the financial one here i'm not hoping for the better i'm preparing for the worst and thanks to my financial pessimism we managed to avoid a much worse situation with our savings in russia Global and national financial systems don't wish us ordinary people any anything well. <laughs> so that's why it's so important not to be delusional. I guess this is it for today my friends thank you so much for watching the video till the end i hope you enjoyed it and as always feel free to share any tips for frugal and fulfilled life in the comment section and just talk about anything you want let's chat and for now be safe and keep your heart open and i hope to see you soon Пока -пока.